Hello kids, welcome to your fifth tutorial in the series that continues to divert from this main topic. So I won't mention the name, actually I'm thinking about splitting this up into maybe two series, one on uh, the computer, computers themselves, processors and whatnot, and another on C++, but we'll see where it goes. Anyway, for this lesson, I've actually given it a name, and I'm calling this, this if it's not written there, this lesson uh, five, uh, exploring the obvious. Now, last time we had a look at uh, division on the Intel X 8086 processor, and uh, I showed you an exception that occurred. Um, well, I'll actually just show you that same example again. So in AX we had 5, in CX we had 2, and we also had 2 in PX, and are the divisions still at? So what I said was the reason this crashed was it doesn't, because there wasn't enough room left in BX to store the remainder. What I wanted to do was divide 5 by 2. But that's not what this instruction actually is, is saying. And to, to explain what this is saying, uh, it's maybe easier for first to let me, let's let it crash. Okay, we'll go through it. Oh. Right over as well. Terrible. Now, that's a hint as to what the div instruction does. Something is overflowing. What is it that's overflowing? That means something's too big to fit into something else. So we gotta get back to where we were. Alright. Two. All right, something won't fit into something, and I figured out exactly what that is. <clears throat> the intention here, my intention, is to divide 5 by 2, but that is not what this instruction uh, actually says. What does it say, or what does it say in general? And um, to uh, explain that. All right, let me write this down here. Uh, now, I had to go and look these words up. It's been so long, this is going back to grade school. Uh, it's been so long since I used these words, I've forgotten what they were. What the div instruction actually says is to take this number and so this is Give CX and divide that by CX. Okay, so um, DX colon AX is the top part, which is called, do you remember from school? It's called either the dividend or sometimes or the numerator. And the bottom part, CX, also has two names, is the divisor or denominator. Alright. Now the rule is that the result of this division goes like this. Um, the result when you divide two numbers, suppose you have any, any two numbers, so I'll use small letters, x divided by y equals something called q, the quotient, plus the, uh, another, let's say, 
Let's say these are integers, x and y are integer numbers, not fractions. Divided by y, and r is called the remainder. R is the remainder. So q is an integer number. Q quotient, and back to caps. An integer, and so is uh, r remainder, also an integer. Integer, and the result of div cx. is this. Uh, the quotient goes into ax and the remainder goes into cx. So therefore two things have to be true. Uh, well, one thing specifically. Definitely, the quotient has to be less than, has to be able to fit in AX. So, hence, quotient must be small enough to fit in AX. And in our example, going back there, it's not. Here we have DX is 2 and AX is 5. So in our example, we have 2 colon 5 divided by 2. Then if we work that out, that's the same as saying 2, 0, 0, 0, whoops, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2 colon 0, 0, 0, 5 divided by 2. Right? What's the quotient? Uh, actually, the colon here can be you know, <coughs> uh, that's the same number. So, what is the quotient? In this case, Q is equal to uh, one followed by four zero. That doesn't fit. Yeah, in AX, AX only has four digits, and this has five, so that fails the first rule. Uh, so uh, this condition fails. So that's the overflow part. Uh, as far as the remainder, well, doesn't even matter. If the quotient won't fit. Uh, into uh, AX, so we can stop there and, and forget about continuing on with the division. So it's nothing really to do with the remainder not fitting in DX. It's more that the uh, quotient won't fit in AX. But one way to make sure of that is to apply the, the simple rule that we have to make sure that CX has to be bigger than dx. Then the dx will part here will clear out and then uh, the quotient will fit nicely in ax and also the remainder will fit nicely in dx. So that's one thing uh, that we learned. So that got me to thinking about the reason why I call this uh, tutorial thinking about the obvious or whatever I call it. When you think about obvious things like um, like division or whatever, when you and then try to look at them, it always seems to me to work out that it, it, the more you think about an obvious thing, the less obvious it actually becomes. Right? I was thinking about negative numbers, for instance. You know, I mean, in terms of how a, the computer thinks, what is it 
What is a negative number? When you write computer programs, you use negative numbers all the time. Uh, but how does the CPU think of a negative number? How does it represent it? You know. Now, this brings me back to the, let's say, grade school and being and learning for the first time about negative numbers. And this probably happened to you. Uh, you know, you, le you learned how to add first, and that was pretty easy. And you learned how to subtract, and that was always pretty easy until eventually they tried to get you. And they gave you a question like subtract, you know, uh, 7 minus 8. And then, you're, and then you're trying to figure out how to do it. And you, you know about the bor borrowing rule, you know? But, uh, I'll get back to where I was. The borrowing rule. Okay, well, so, so I'm given this problem 7 minus 8. Now, normally, whoops. In order to do this, if, if it was 17, say, minus 8. I had a rule for that. And what I would do is I would oh, let's make it even bigger. I, I would borrow 1 from the 2 here to change this into a 1 and then sort of place the 1 up here and that means you, you place it kind of in the middle like well, I guess I could do it. Spaces here. There we go. That means 17. Now, what I do is I subtract 8 from 17. You know, well, let's see, 8 and 8 is 16. So, uh, what would I have to add to 8 in order to make 17? Well, it's going to be 9. So that's 9. And then I drop the 1 down. And so the answer is 19. Okay, no problem. But what about uh, when there's nothing to borrow? Can't borrow from that uh, 7 there. There's nothing. Um, let's put this on. There's nothing to the left hand side for me to borrow from. Okay. Now, if you had an intelligent teacher they would have told you how to do how to work this out <coughs> at least not how to understand it but how to do it what they would tell you is okay look if the bottom part is bigger than the top part just flip, flip it around so get rid of this put the 8 up here put the 7 down here and uh, remember that there's a you know, you know, minus and waiting here. Do the subtraction at one. And now take that minus sign, put it in front, and there's your answer. Minus one. Wow. Wow, that's wonderful. So there's only one thing to remember. All I gotta do is remember regular subtraction. And uh, if the bottom's too big, then flip it around, and all I gotta do is put a minus one in front. So that's great. <clears throat> now, that's a rule that you can easily apply. Um, but what you don't realize, and what your teacher probably didn't realize either, is that your teacher, he or she, is relying on the fact that you have a brain. That is, that you can understand an instruction like, you know, if that's bigger than that, flip it around. Okay? Well, a computer doesn't know what you mean by if that's bigger. All, all the computer is is a bunch of wires and, you know, circuitry and some voltages. Uh, it's plus volts, five volts, or it's zero volts. So, you know, you can't tell it if that's bigger. 
That's not a thing that a computer understands. It doesn't understand. Or saying, put a minus sign in front. What do you mean a minus sign? There's no minus sign. Well, you know, in here there, there are characters that look like minus signs, but that's just a display. As far as the computer is concerned, uh, these things, these things that are represented as numbers here, are for our convenience. What they, re what they really are, uh, <clears throat> what they really are, are a visual representation of the voltage levels on wires. And there are 16 wires uh, plugged into a slot somewhere which we call AX and uh, it turns out that uh, uh, two of them happen to be at 5 volts and all the rest of them are at 0 volts like this 5 here which really this whoops in terms of uh, voltage it's, it's that you know two little lines are uh, high or low. Maybe maybe it works the other way around, but that's not the point. The, the point is there's no thinking here. In order to make a computer uh, do subtraction, you can't rely on it having any intelligence. You have to give it specific a specific set of instructions to follow so that it can do the whole thing without understanding uh, what it's doing because it doesn't it doesn't understand. Okay, so so um, <clears throat> so how is your smart teacher going to teach the computer how to do subtraction? How do we, how do we do it? So that's going to be the subject of the next tutorial. How do we teach a dumb computer how to subtract numbers? Okay, well, until that time, thanks for watching. Goodbye.